deep in the night Your heart fills with dread Probably a murderer who wants you dead It could be a ghost, a demon or worse Perhaps you're the victim of a witch's curse It's hopeless, you're doomed You'd call a priest if you could You'd rather just listen to who? Sinisterhood I'm gonna kill you Welcome, welcome to another edition of Freaky Friday Where we tell your odd but true stories We have six stories today six. that run the gamut from hauntings to aliens to bizarre encounters we got it all lots of people with freaky stories which yes. I, I feel like that tracks for our listeners if you're into this <laughs> think, stuff yeah. you probably have had you have some stories of your own so thank Keep you to everybody that submitted these today uh it's a lot of fun going through and reading all the submissions we get so thank you so much everybody and- you have your own submission. Go to our website, sinisterhood.com slash Freaky Friday, and there's a whole submission form. You can tell us the whole story. Yes. Give it to us straight. All will be considered. Give us all the details, all the stuff that, even if you think, ah, oh, they wouldn't want to hear this part of it, write it in. Yeah. We want to hear all the nitty gritty details. All right. Well, are we ready? I think so. Can we you say know. let's get into it on this one? I think we can. We're always getting into it. That's true. (laughs) I'm currently in it as we speak. (laughs) Well, let's get into it. Um, This first one is from Tiffany. Thank you, Tiffany. And it is called Haunted Childhood Home. And content warning, this does involve the loss of a pet. Hey there. My name is Tiffany. Newer to your podcast. I just wanted to write in and tell you one of my many paranormal experiences in my house I grew up in. So just to set the scene... My house was located in the city of Lockport in New York. On this street, only four houses are on this street and separated far apart from each other. To get up to the house, you have to drive up a long driveway to the top. Once you get to the mudroom, you open it up and there is a wood-burning stove, then the front door, which usually we kept open to heat the whole house. So since I kind of painted a picture of the house, here's my story. My mom dropped me off pretty late at night so she could go to bingo. When I walked up to the mudroom door, I unlocked it and opened the door up. Inside, I saw a man with a pretty big hat had the wood-burning stove open and was, what it looked like, looking at the fire. I freak out, slam the door, and run halfway down the huge driveway. I slam on my mom's trunk and scream, Someone's in the house! She hurries up and calls the cops. They show up and look through the whole house. They ask me what happened. I tell them the whole story. They ask, All the doors were locked? I'm like, Yeah. They repeat it again. Then I realize it wasn't an actual person. My mom says, I think you've seen a ghost. She then referred to a story I never knew about. One day my dad was taking a nap on the recliner in the living room. He was shaken awake hard and told in his ear, There's a fire, fire, fire. He woke up and sure enough, the wood-burning stove stack was on fire. Then on February 14th, 2019, My mom was at a reading. She's a medium. Another story for a different day. She tells everyone that she's doing cards on that she has to go. Something is wrong with the house. She raced home and called my brother, but he wasn't home. She showed up, and the house was on fire. She calls the fire department, which is only about five minutes away. The dispatch says they're sending someone. My mom is trying to find the dogs, but the fire department went to the wrong address. The whole house went up in flames. We lost three of our dogs and everything inside. She told us that she was hearing someone tell her, hurry up and get home, but ignored it for a little bit until it affected her readings. Then she raced off. She thinks that if she would have listened, that she would have saved the house and dogs. A few days after the fire, my dad, mom, and I walk up the driveway to see what has been destroyed. We hear dogs running up the driveway and barking. You could see how excited my dad and mom were to think the dogs got out. Unfortunately, when we turned around, they weren't there. They have since rebuilt a house. A basket raffle and GoFundMe paid for the rebuild. But every now and then, you'll hear the dogs barking and see figures on the property. If you read this, I appreciate it so much. Your podcast is the best while I'm working on my machine. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Wow. Lots to this. First of all, you get a message 
during a psychic reading, that's got to be confusing. Because is it, <laughs> yeah. for you, is it the person, you'd be like, I think someone's telling you you need to get to your house. And then the next person, someone's telling you you mm-hmm. need to get to your house. But really, it's all for you. Yeah. And then they also, hear the, her dad also got a message. Yeah. And the man just sitting in the hat staring at the fire. Maybe he was watching the fire to try to make sure it didn't get out of mm. hand. Or I was thinking maybe there was another fire long ago on the property. Mm-hmm. That because it's I got the feeling like maybe he it was a cowboy or something. Yeah, from way back when trying yeah. to he's like you don't know what happens in these kind of houses. Mm-hmm. Gosh, Man. wood burning stoves uh, seems like those are a hazard. Could be a dangerous game for I guess sure. So yeah, yeah, I've never. Well, I mean, we have no. You have ceramic logs. Mm-hmm. We have a wood burning fireplace, but I mm-hmm. imagine this is one of those like freestanding mm-hmm. stoves, um, which I always like. All in those. Oh, yeah. Northern Maine homes, they're so cozy, but apparently also dangerous. Yeah, you never know. But if you have a cowboy watching out for you, maybe you will be okay. Or you're a medium and can get messages, but so sad for the dogs. And not to mention, your entire life goes up. Fire is such a scary thing. Mm -hmm. I had a friend in elementary school who's, I think I've talked about this before, whose house burned down. They lost everything and... (sighs) There was, um, at the school, like, everyone did a big donation drive for them and everything. She, it was her and, uh, she had an older brother, too. The way their house burnt down is they had a cat, and there was some paper near their stove, and the cat jumped up on the counter and somehow turned the stove on, (gasps) and it caught the paper on fire and burned down their house. To this day, I will not let anything near the stove and when we had a cat i told tommy this like all the time i'd be like my friend katie's house burned down we were in elementary school because the cat jumped up on the counter yeah and he's like there's no way that's gonna happen i was like well it did so uh do not put a pizza box near this Mm -mm. i was i'm so paranoid about it so all it takes is once so it's better to be safe than sorry yeah that's tough you would never think to do that i know i know and it goes up so fast and Mm-mm. It's so hard to contain, like the even to be a neighbor, like next door to something going up. Yeah. It well, thank you so much, Tiffany. We're glad that you and your family were safe and made it out. Uh, we're very sorry for the loss of your doggies, though. Mm-hmm. This next one also has content warning. It involves a pregnancy loss. This is from Hannah, and the subject is my nanny came to visit. I really want to tell you my first ghost experience ever. I'm not at all spiritual, nor do I believe in ghosts. But hey, here we go. It's a bit of a sad one, but it warms my heart too. But I can understand if you don't want to share. I just wanted to put this out into the world, even if it's just by writing it down. Two nights ago, I took my last pregnancy test to check that the surgical removal of miscarriage has worked. Well, I was a mess. My hubby was asleep and I didn't want to wake him because he has been there every damn step of the way. I wish I had done the pregnancy test with him, but alas, I didn't. Anyway, I decided to put the book down I was reading and turn over to maybe try and get some sleep. 4 a.m. at the time, but hey, it was worth a try. Next thing I heard were the faintest footsteps. The mother and me wanted to protect my sleeping children in the other rooms. I started looking around me for weapons, which I decided on my bedside lamp. Bitch, I am ready for you. (laughs) Well, as you probably guessed it, no one is there. I lay back down, heart beating on my chest, trying to mentally reassure myself I didn't need to beat someone's ass tonight. I get comfy, and the next thing I know, I feel someone, something, sit on the bed. There was no mistaking it, the pressure on my leg and the imprint on the bed. Then I get the strongest smell of my nan I've ever smelt in my life. She had this necklace with perfume in it, and it smelt of that. I truly believe she came to give me comfort whilst I was crying alone and to say baby is safe with her now. Whether it was my mind playing tricks, who knows, but I'm taking it at face value and believing that it was her visiting me. I buried my baby alongside my nanny in her grave, and I can imagine her rocking it in her arms. It gives me peace to know she is keeping my baby safe till we can meet again. Thanks for reading. I think my views on the spiritual world has been challenged for sure, and I'm hoping she will visit me again soon. 
this one is kind of in the line with George's stories from last mm-hmm. week where it's somebody that loves you so much and just wants to reach out and comfort you if they yep. can. They know. And I've heard that um, smells are one of the ways that um, those on the other side really try and, and reach us because mm-hmm. our memories are so asso- connected with smells. Like mm-hmm. I can smell something, Neutrogena shampoo. I'm immediately transported to elementary school sleepaway camp or mm-hmm. like sea breeze. Like there are just certain smells that like immediately take me back. So when you smell that undeniable smell of perfume that someone wore, that's a big that's a big sign. Yeah, when I inherited my grandmother's vanity, it's wood and it had just absorbed the smell of like her makeup and mm-hmm. perfume and stuff. And just opening that drawer, it just smells like mamma. It's just a wa- yeah, yeah, I have mm-hmm. several um jewelry boxes of my grandmother's and my great grandmother's and it has all their old like costume jewelry inside Mm -hmm. and it has that exact same smell and sometimes i'll just open them up and just go through everything and smell them because i just Mm -hmm. like to hold it and like have those memories or like the smell of old books yeah it's like it's it is a good connection well thank you so much hannah this next one is from mora and this is camping at joe pool lake Hello, y'all. Have to start with the normal intro of I love y'all, the show, and appreciate all of the work that is put into it. Y'all definitely make the Patreon and just the show in general so worth it. Anyways, I don't know what this would fall under. It's short, but always just made me sad and wonder about why this happened. I was camping with my family at good old Joe Pool Lake. If you're from DFW, you know where this is. It was just about to get dark, and a woman walked by with her daughter. I think it was her daughter, or at least she said so. We were playing by the lake, and they stayed for a while hanging out. The mom asked if the little girl could eat with us while she ran to the store. My parents offered the woman whatever we had if that's what she needed, but she declined. My mom and stepfather were taken aback, but said sure. Basically, she was my new friend for the next few hours. She was around my age, I want to say eight-ish, white with blondish hair and light eyes. She was so nice, and we warmed up to each other quickly. We just hung out and made s'mores after eating hot dogs around the campfire. After a few hours, I could see on my parents' faces that they were concerned. I was too, and also wondering where her mom was. It got closer to 9 or 10 p.m. I saw red and blue lights come up to our site. I thought, wow, the cops are here. This is scary. No news on the little girl's mother, but they had to take her with them since she had no legal guardian with her at that moment. I remember feeling upset for her, that her mom didn't come back for her, and she ended up in a police car, not knowing what is going to happen. My mom gave her some snacks, some of my clothes, and I remember giving her a toy of some sort. I started to cry, and she did too. We never did figure out what happened. My mom said she searched the news for a while after that, but nothing. I always wonder, did her mom do this on purpose? Was it to protect her daughter from a bad situation? Did something bad happen to the mom? Was this even her daughter? Sorry, not too wild, but I will never forget it. I personally wouldn't leave my child with someone I just met, but who knows the real reason she did it. Love y'all so much. Keep it creepy. Mwahaha. Wow. Joe Pool Lake. Good old Joe Pool Lake. I think I would do what what they did. I would would say, okay. Mm -hmm. And... Expect that she came back quickly. Yeah. I do wonder why the cops showed up. If yeah, it that's was the scary part. Unrelated or because it makes she makes it sound like it wasn't related or at least they didn't say like this is about them. But mm-hmm. um, my immediate thought is it was intentional, but I hope it yeah. wasn't. But yeah. That's or what she I thought. thought. Oh, look, a happy family. Yeah. I'm going to give her a better life. And yeah. leave her. The only reason why I would think the cops would come there is if something happened to the mom or she was arrested or something. Mm-hmm. And she said, well, please don't take me in. My daughter's at Joe Pool Lake with a family. Mm-hmm. Go get her or something. So maybe the mom was aware, awake, able to say something and nothing, you know, too horrible happened to That's her. But better. you, you know, you say to yourself, somebody's got to be in a bad way to think. My kid is better off with this nice family yeah. than with me. So that's heartbreaking, man. Or maybe th- I, I hope that it is that 
she intended to go to the store and maybe, I don't, I mean, I hope she didn't get arrested, but that's better than she just left her child behind. So maybe she didn't mm-hmm. get arrested and then the cops went to go pick her up. But yeah, that's, um, that'll stick with you and good on the mom and dad for, for helping her out. She probably, these are, this is one of those things that if Mora remembers this, mm-hmm. I imagine the, the other girl does too. And you wonder what her version of the story is. for, And what happened to her. Because yeah. you think, you know, your lives cross like that. Mm-hmm. Whether it's a kid you had, like, in one class in grade school or something even as short as this of, like, we met on a playground mm-hmm. once or something. Or your mother, you know, left us to babysit you. And you go, man, whatever happened to him. Mm-hmm. But hopefully, if you're listening and you were left at Joe Pool Lake, we would love to connect you with Oh, Laura. yes. You never know. We, Stranger we things hope you're happened. safe. Yes, we yeah. sure do. Yes. Well, now, Heather, it's All right. your turn. I got a couple for you. This first one is from Bridget, and the subject line is UFO in the Rockies. I'm a Colorado native and went to school at the University of Colorado in Boulder, home of NASA and Ball Aerospace. I studied astrophysics under some of the most prolific scientists in the field, including a colleague of Stephen Hawking paid by the university to prove the existence of black holes in the 1980s. It was no secret all of my professors believed in extraterrestrials, but they loved to debate the intelligence, purpose, and technological advancements of them. All this to say, I love space and theoretical astrophysics, but I am also a deeply rational thinker. About five years ago, I was driving alone deep in the Rocky Mountains, west of Boulder. It was around midnight on a moonless January night. I was the only car on the road, and there were no lights to be seen for miles. No cars, homes, or city lights could be seen in the rugged terrain. As a cautious habit, I looked in my rearview mirror, expecting to see nothing but darkness. To my surprise, I could see three circular lights hovering in the distance behind me. They were much higher than a car's profile, but not so high that it could be a passing aircraft. They were stacked vertically on one another, equidistant from the next, similar to a traffic light. I figured it was a light phenomena happening in my eyes and didn't think much of it. I kept driving into the darkness, but the lights maintained the same distance behind me for miles, never drawing nearer or further away, and following the curves of the mountains. The only change in the light's characteristics was they suddenly flipped to lay horizontally rather than vertically. I kept driving for several miles to see if I could lose the lights as the winding road took me through the canyon. Still following me, I decided to speed up to see if it would match my pace, which, to my surprise, they did, never breaking uniform. Then I slowed down. My brake lights flooded the dark expanse with a red glow. The moment the flood of red light swept the area, the green lights vanished and never reappeared leaving me alone in the dark, cold mountains. I continued down the mountain road in my old Jeep Wrangler, eloquently wondering, what the actual fuck? For years, I debated the encounter with myself, my rational brain declaring it an aerial light phenomenon or just a drone observing the vast landscape. However, my curious scientific brain remembered the mysterious and inexplicable things we've discovered in space, which always brought me back to the same conclusion. Fucking aliens, man. (laughs) <laughs> oh bridget bridget you, you saw alien you saw a ufo bridget you seen it i love oh. that um my favorite part of this is confirmation that all of these astrophysicists are like there is life on other planets yes. and it's not even like they don't even debate that they just debate well how far along are they in their technological yes. advancements what do so, they want with us? i love that yes because I also believe in life on other planets. So same. If it's good enough for an astrophysicist, it's good enough for me. I think that's just my my uh, mantra now in life will be that. If it's good enough for an astrophysicist, <laughs> it's good enough for me. Um, I hope that the aliens are not like the Kate McKinnon ones where they just slap your titties around and make you pee in a bowl. But um, um, yeah, could be. Yeah, it could be worse. Maybe. <laughs> could be worse. <laughs> She's like, I don't think this was protocol. They were checking down the hallway. Man, that's such um, a great sketch. Kind of leave you on the top of the Waffle House. Um <laughs> Well, that is, um, I'm about to go on the our honeymoon. Yeah. We're going to go to Marfa and Big Bend. And I imagine there's going to be a lot of stargazing, a lot of driving around the darkness. And I'm fully expecting to see a UFO. I'm going to see the lights. You're going to sure. see the lights, lights for sure. But I'm going to see a UFO. You got to see, yeah, you're going to be out in that desert. You got to got to keep your eyes peeled for those uh, what are unidentified aerial phenomenon. Yes, the UAPs. Mm-hmm. I'm going to. 
Keep my eyes on the sky. Yeah. Well, I think, thank uh, you. Thank you. I think you saw one, Bridget. That's um, I think so. That's pretty. I I want to see one so bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't in the city. I don't think we can. No, it's nobody's so, coming to Dallas. Light. Well, I mean, even if they did, the we outskirts. wouldn't see them. Yeah, that's true. There's so much light pollution over here. The other day, Ella was like, Mommy, do you want to go outside and look at the moon? And I was like, well, I'd love to, but uh, I don't know if we could see it. There's uh, so much light pollution. that. But Tommy was like, we'll go get a cabin in uh, like Broken Bow or something because mm-hmm. she likes to look at the stars. And I'm like, we'll show you some stars, baby girl. You ain't, you you ain't seen nothing yet. And a Bigfoot. There's a lot of Bigfoot stuff in Broken Bow, so it's oh, a double, gosh. double whammy. Oh, gosh. God, her dream vacation. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Bridget. Uh, this next one is from Lindsay, and the subject is, My parents' house is haunted, and every member of my family has seen or heard the ghosts. Hi, gals. My parents' house in Sun City, Texas, is haunted. They moved in 11 years ago, and the experiences started right away. Every adult member of my immediate family, approximately 10 people, has seen at least one or both ghosts. The man in the hat likes to peek at you around corners and can be in any doorway in the house. The old woman stands in the hallways watching you, but both disappear once you get closer to investigate. My dad was a skeptic until he saw the reflection of a woman standing in the hallway behind him while facing a mirror at the end of that hallway. He initially thought it was my mom. Then he remembered she was in another part of the house. When he called out to her, he confirmed she was in the kitchen and couldn't possibly be standing behind him. When he looked back, the woman was gone. We often hear loud banging in the kitchen of pots and pans, like someone is cooking in the middle of the night. And, most recently, my mom was in her bedroom with a dog they adopted about three months ago. They were alone in the house and both heard a woman's voice clearly say the dog's name twice, as if calling her to the living room. The dog's ears perked up and she started barking at the bedroom doorway, but she wouldn't leave the room. The extra creepy part of this story are that the dog's name is not a common one, so even if a TV or radio were on, which they were not, it would be highly unlikely that you would hear a woman say, Freya, Freya. Also creepy is that my mother is extremely hard of hearing. Her hearing aids were broken at the time, but she still heard the voice clearly. When she went to the living room to see if anyone had come over for a visit, she was all alone in the house. We've all learned to live with the ghost and often swap stories when we gather as a family. In fact, it's almost a rite of initiation to the family. We're all pretty logical and tend not to jump to ghost as the explanation when we see or hear something. But after 11 years of sightings, sounds, and cold spots, we've accepted my parents' ghostly housemates. We never feel threatened, but instead, just to shiver and moving on with the party. Keep doing great work, and thank you for your amazing show. <laughs> the mirror. The mirror. When you you saw me, I was just yeah, shaking my head crouch. back and forth. <laughs> I do not like the mirror thing. It gets me in movies, even if I know it's coming. I just got chills. <laughs> I, I, I was reading some of our... Um, other submissions that we haven't covered yet and there was another one involving a mirror and i was like nope it's just Mm-mm. oh yeah i oh in the in a movie when there's a character in the bathroom at the medicine cabinet and it's and open like, and then they shut it and there's someone <laughs> standing behind them. nah or and when they wash their face still gets you. yes when i wash my face i like get soap in my eyes yes. my shit is open i cannot be shutting my eyes because somebody's be standing behind you like six cents mm-hmm. style i can't with that no that's mm-hmm. Yeah, and the the call into the name. I mm-hmm. knew a woman I, when I used to pet sit. I had a client that their dog's name was Freya, Mm-mm. beautiful, um, oh Weimaraner. Mm. But when the dogs hear it, you're like, I didn't just hear that. Like this dog also heard that. That's what freaks me out. If the goose like looks in the corner mm-hmm. and starts barking at something, I'm like, stop it. <laughs> no. What are you, are you looking doing? at? I'm yeah. like, please be a scorpion. Please be a spider. Please be something I can <laughs> actually like catch right? and not yeah. something she sees, but I don't. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, that is, uh, you know, like you said, if you don't feel like Lindsay said, if they don't feel, you know, threatened or mm-hmm. nobody's angry or whatever, you just kind of go, all right, well, well we're, this, we're, is- this is my roommate. Yeah, I did not sign up for it, but I can't get rid of them. So we're going to learn to coexist. 
Uh, somewhere in my Facebooking, I joined a group that was just all spooky shit, and but it's all people that take it really seriously, which I love. And one of the questions was, "Hey guys, uh, not it," and it's done in such a I don't hate to say like flippant manner, but it's kind of like accepted like this. We're like, oh yeah, our house is haunted. So, mm-hmm. we, and someone was like, hey, you know, my house has always had like sounds, and there's always been you know interactions with energy and. Recently, it just started banging on my door at like three in the morning, mm. like real hard. Like, what do I do? And I was like, burn your house to the ground. <laughs> like, leave. <laughs> you Go move. somewhere else. Because they were like, well, before things would move or, you know, I could kind of feel energy mm-hmm. in cold spots. And now it started pounding mm-hmm. on the bedroom door. And I was like. It's escalating. Yeah. What did people say to do? Well, there, like a ton of stuff, like not just sage, but there was like different herbs you can burn. And it was. Uh, salt you know, at the doorways. Yeah. Salt yeah. at the doorway. Things you could chant. Stuff like that. Thing, they were like, address it in a clear voice and be like, you need to move on. You're no longer welcome here. But then other people were like, oh, yeah, it happened to me, too. Uh-uh. So was like, there's a whole swath of the population, myself included, who's, in, you know, you kind of encounter something and you go, well, that's just part of life, you know. Uh, the banging on the door would. I, that. I, no, I, I no, I'm out. I'm out at that. I'm out. No, 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 no. No, I can't deal. Anything where I feel like I'm threatened. If there's mm-hmm. just like, well, my uh, coffee mug got moved again. Good old Carla with the coffee mug. I'm fine with that. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I, if somebody's like banging on my shit at three. One, I'm like, I got kids. You just woke up my kids. That's my number one complaint. <laughs> what to fight. What to throw. You, you're you going to put this baby back to sleep. <laughs> so get your ghost to. arms over here and pick up this baby. Yeah, if somebody's banging on my door at night, it would be like a joke, like a preacher, a Catholic priest, and a rabbi would all be at my house. At this mm-hmm. I'd be like, all three of y'all, yes. power ranger this shit. Somebody your power is united. I don't care who does, but somebody <laughs> get rid of it. Yeah. Figure it out. Well, thank you so much, Lindsay. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, for our final one, we have some audio. We'll have um, Tommy clip in the audio so you all mm-hmm. can hear it along with I've us. I've listened. So. Have you listened? I have it pulled up. I'm going to listen in real time. Okay. Okay. I've already listened, so okay. this is good. I have it. Okay. Let me make sure it's okay. It's queued up on my end. Okay. This is from Kim. And the subject line is, the time I accidentally caught an EVP. Nearly five years ago, I downloaded an app called Sleep Talk. Girl, you asking for trouble. I'm sorry. (laughs) (laughs) To use Sleep Talk, you activate the app when you go to bed. After a half an hour, it will start recording any sleep noises you make. So if you talk in your sleep, it will catch it and you'll know what you said. It will also catch any bed creaks, snoring, farts, and any other noises your room makes. You can set the sensitivity so it won't pick up on other noises in your house. The first few nights I used it, I caught nothing but some snores, murmurs, and the occasional sound of me switching my sleep position. You wouldn't do if you had a Helix mattress. Uh, (laughs) One morning, when I was checking over what the app caught, I found something. Now, something you should know is that I sleep alone and didn't have an animal at the time. I do not have a history of sleep apnea. In the recording, I hear what, in my opinion, is someone talking. That someone is not me. It sounds nothing like me. At this point, I had been using the app for a week. Whatever this is did not sound like any other sleep noises I make. So we asked Kim if we could hear the recording and play Mm -hmm. it on the air. So I am going to listen to this. I'll read you the description. What you hear first is me moving around and me kind of snoring. The EVP, or whatever it may be, is picked up about 13 seconds in. Oh, interesting. 13. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Uh, feel free to shorten the audio. I just left the beginning part in so you hear some of the normal noises I make. Again, I sleep alone, had no pet at the time, and do not have a history of sleep apnea. What do you hear? Okay, we're going to play it for you. You're going to play it? Uh huh. I'm going to turn it up and listen again. I hate it. (laughs) So when she sent the email, what I loved about this email is that she wrote in um, white what she thought it said. So then it wasn't spoiled for us. So we had to like, she was like, Highlight below to see what I thought it said so we didn't, like, have a um, clouded version of it listening. So, but I, I, you can probably see what it I mean, I can see it. Yeah. What did you think it it said? I thought it said, hey. Okay. So, when, what did you think? Um, 
like a grunt almost or okay. like yeah like a hey like, huh. yeah or yeah. Huh. yeah i thought it was like hey oh mm. it sounded more like gruff to me than that hey. well, uh i need to listen to it again okay i'm listening right now it sounds like um if and i know that they do not have a pet but it sounds like if a dog was trying to like hack something up Mm. Like, like almost like that to me. I can hear how it would be like here, maybe with an accent, like here, here. Oh, let me listen again, but thinking here. accent. Yeah. Where are we going to put the body? Here. Mm, I don't like it. I'll tell you yeah. that. Yeah, whatever it is, it's not a fart. I wish it was a fart <laughs> for her sake. For your sake, Kim, I wish it was a fart or a snore or something. But it does not sound to me like it's you, sadly. No, it, I would, if it was, if she had a pet or something, I would think it was that. But, and it's it's the same noise, like the exact same noise back to back. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> yeah. But... I think the first problem here was you downloaded an app called Sleep Talk. I've I've hear. seen so much shit on Reddit from people that have downloaded this, and I I, I want ignorance, blissful ignorance. I don't want to know what happens. <laughs> if the demons are dancing in my bedroom, as long as they keep it down and let me sleep through it, go on. <laughs> right. Uh, and don't wake the goose, because she will bark and mm-hmm. growl at you. She sleeps in the bed with me. But yeah, I'm like, anything else is fine. Uh, I would be, you know, I have friends and family and people I know that like sleep talk and have recorded, mm-hmm. you know, themselves laughing or talking or whatever, but uh, don't know that I've ever had someone who is alone have someone else's voice recorded. That is. Yeah. <laughs> Both my kids. Um, well, Ella will talk in her sleep a lot. She also grinds her teeth, which Baby. sends me. Yeah. Um. I don't know. Well, um, listeners can uh, let us know and yeah, what you guys think it is. And thank you, Kim, for sending yes. that in. Thank you, thank you. We, uh, it, I'm, if you've caught any any more, because that was nearly five years ago. Yeah. So, or you stop fucking with that. Yeah. App, or you're like, smart. that's that's good. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what you are, but I'm good. <laughs> plenty. That's plenty. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you all so much for sending in your Freaky Friday stories. If you have an odd but true story, maybe you've encountered Bigfoot, you've seen a UFO, you had a brush with true crime, or you've felt the presence of an otherworldly being, send them in at Sinisterhood.com slash Freaky Friday. And if you have an accompanying uh, uh, sound, like Kim submitted through the form and then said, because you put your email in the form and says like, hey, let me know I have an attachment. We can email you and follow up. Yeah. So that's the easiest way still is to do the form. Yes. So it doesn't get lost in the DMs or in the emails. Yes. And we would love we would love uh, if there's photos or video mm-hmm. or audio, whatever. We'll take a look at it. That All sounds it. awesome. For sure. Um, yeah. Send it in. Please. We love them. We love providing sinisterhood to you at no cost. So if you like what you hear, consider supporting the show by donating to our Patreon. We're a small operation creating this show for you by researching, writing, recording, and producing it ourselves. Any amount is sincerely appreciated and helps offset the cost of making and hosting the show. As a thank you, you also get some sweet perks like ad-free episodes, a Sinisterhood sticker, membership to our exclusive Patreon Facebook group for those in the Ruling the Airwaves and Getting Into It tiers, a special shout-out on the show, a monthly bonus mini-sode. This month was Murdoch Update from South Carolina. And you also get patron-exclusive video and audio content, including Am I the Asshole, Relationship Advice, Judge Christie, Dear Sinisterhood, Wet It Drama, True Crime Headlines, and so much more. You also have the fun perk of access to our Discord server, where you can connect with other fans in real time and discuss the latest in true crime, share personal ghost stories, or just post adorable pictures of your pets. We hop on occasionally, and we host monthly Q&As on Crowdcast, where you can ask us all your burning questions. This month, it is March 16th at 8 p.m. Central Time, and then the following evening on the 17th, St. Patrick's Day, we'll be doing our live stream it was voted on that we're doing wet it drama just in time for Heather's wedding. So join us on 8 p.m. Central on that day, too. 
I have my own wedding drama that I'll share with you all about mm. how my wedding dress got destroyed. I was there for it. Yeah. <laughs> I want to tell. I only want to tell a story because I want to tell how freaking badass Judge Christie was in my corner, you guys. <laughs> and I was like, "There's nobody who could be here who could drop the hammer as much oh, as Judge Christie." Oh, I think Lawyer Megan did. Just oh yeah, a, a better job than me. <laughs> no, both of y'all. The, I looked over at one point and I was texting my sister, going, uh, "Megan and Christie are standing shoulder to shoulder, both with their arms crossed, <laughs> and almost simultaneously said the word compensation." <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So we'll get into that on the Wedit live stream. Uh, for our patrons not in the U.S., you also have the option to pay in pounds or euros, saving you the cost of the conversion fee. Annual memberships for all tiers are also now available. And if you select this option, you are rewarded with a free month of membership. For more details on all of this and specific member tiers, visit SinisterHood.com and click Patreon on the top banner. So many of you have been tagging us in pictures of you sporting your sweet Sinisterhood merch. Keep those pictures coming. And if you want some cool swag like t-shirts, mugs, totes, and even clothes for your kiddos, visit Sinisterhood.com and click on shop in the top banner. Maybe we'll make a new shirt that says if it's good enough for an astrophysicist, it's good enough for me. (laughs) Would wear. The best thing you can do to help us grow is like, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcast. And please tell a friend who you think would like us to check us out. It means so much to us and really helps podcasts like us get more exposure. You can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Sinisterhood Pod and like us on Facebook at Sinisterhood. You can also follow us on TikTok at Sinisterhood Podcast and follow us on our new YouTube page as well, which is Sinisterhood. You can search us putting all the episodes up there Mm-hmm. and these too yeah and uh we've got a tiktok video up now you guys there's a tiktok, uh, I did a TikTok. and it's really good <laughs> by i mean paris did a tiktok and i uploaded it after paris did a video that TikTok. then was uploaded to tiktok and uh other channels as well but it is it's very good so go check it out our hannah crane is short christy well, where are you at? i am on tiktok at christy or gtfo I am on Instagram at Christy M. Wallace, and I am on Twitter at Christy or GTFO. Could have arranged those to make more sense. Sandwich. But it's I a did Christ- not. <laughs> Christy or GTFO sandwich. Heather? Uh, I'm on the Twitter at MCK versus the world, and then on Instagram and TikTok at Heather versus the world. As always, the devil rules the airwaves. Keep it creepy. Sinister Hood